Hi, I'm Chloe and I'm going to be talking to you about some diet tips for improving your HbA1c. What is HbA1c? HbA1c is glycated haemoglobin and it develops when haemoglobin, a protein in your red blood cells that carries oxygen throughout your body, joins with glucose in the blood and becomes glycated. It provides an average of how much glucose has been in the blood over the last three months. To measure your HbA1c, blood will be taken from your arm during a standard blood test and is therefore different to a finger prick test that measures your current blood glucose level there and then. So, what are the targets? The HbA1c level that identifies whether a person has been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is 48 millimoles per mole. You would be classified as pre-diabetic with a HbA1c level of between 42 and 48 millimoles per mole. So how do we reduce our HbA1c? Firstly, we'll look at something called remission. So remission is when your blood glucose level stays below 48 millimoles per mole for at least three months and you don't need to take medication to maintain that level. You should, however, speak to your GP about whether or not to come off your medication because what's right for someone else may not be right for you. It is important to note, however, that remission is not a cure and so if you do go back to your old lifestyle then your diabetes will also most likely return. You should continue to have your annual diabetes review as well. There are a few ways to help you reach remission with the key focus on weight loss. Studies have shown that losing 5 to 10% of your body weight is a great way to reach remission. One way of doing this is by following a very low calorie diet, also the VLCD. So please refer to our video on different diets and diabetes to find out more. Low carb diets are also really popular to help people lose weight and Diabetes UK define a low carb diet as having between 50 and 130 grams of carbohydrates per day. They can be very beneficial in assisting with weight loss. However, it is important to be aware of some common pitfalls, such as having too much saturated fat and salt in your diet, which can lead to other health conditions, such as high cholesterol and blood pressure levels. Foods high in saturated fat and salt would include processed meats such as sausages and bacon. You can find out more about each of these conditions in our other videos on cholesterol and blood pressure. So now we will look at glycemic index. And some of you may have heard this term glycemic index or GI and this simply relates to how quickly that food will raise your blood glucose levels. And overall, we would actually tend to look at the whole meal rather than focusing on the carbohydrates alone. And so those different components of your plate will all impact on the GI of your meal. If you were to eat carbohydrates on their own, then you would typically find your blood glucose levels will rise much quicker than if you were to pair that carbohydrate with fat and protein, because those food groups help slow down the absorption of the carbohydrate. Similarly, opting for whole grain carbohydrates that have a higher fiber content will also help to reduce spikes in your blood glucose levels as they slow down the release of sugar and absorption of carbohydrate. To help keep your blood glucose levels stable, we would encourage you to monitor your portion size of carbohydrates, stick into a clenched fist size or a quarter of your plate and have balanced meals, including some protein and vegetables or salad. Having too many carbohydrates in one go can really increase your blood glucose levels. You can find out more about carbohydrates in our main diet video. 
So, some practical aspects of identifying what a portion of carbohydrate really looks like. A portion is the amount of a food that you eat in one time. For example, how much food you put on your plate at a meal, or how much is in a packet. So, what would one carbohydrate portion look like? 34 to 35 grams of bread, which would be one medium slice. 75 grams of uncooked or 150 grams of cooked pasta, which is two to three tablespoons. 50 grams of uncooked or 150 grams of cooked rice. So again, two to three tablespoons. 175 grams of boiled potatoes with the skin kept on, which is three egg-sized new potatoes. 180 grams of a baked or jacket potato, which is about one medium-sized potato. 30 grams of any puffed or flaked breakfast cereals, so three tablespoons. 40 grams of porridge oats, or three tablespoons and 45 grams of muesli or granola, which again is two to three tablespoons. So, some top tips for reducing your HbA1c. Get good sleep. Reduce stress by doing something like mindfulness. Get regular exercise. Aim for 30 minutes, five times a week to raise your heartbeat. Activities like walking fast and cycling all count. Twice a week, add activities like gardening or yoga to help strengthen your muscles. Stop smoking. For help giving up, ask for your local stop smoking service. A healthy, balanced diet and lifestyle. Maintain a healthy weight. Eat less fatty food such as processed meats, full-fat dairy products, and pastries and cakes. Carbohydrates can change your blood glucose levels, so you may need to eat less carbohydrates and choose more of the whole grain variety. Reduce your alcohol consumption if you do drink to having no more than 14 units a week. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, aiming for at least five portions a day. Aim for at least two portions of fish a week, with one being oily. You can also attend a structured education course, so please speak to your GP or dietitian if you wish to be referred to one of our education sessions. Thank you.